How's that drink, Corbin? That's delicious. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to our stupid directions. You need some Corbin. I'm Rick, and you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Corn. It's so juicy. Should be covering the belt part of the vacation squad. Back. And follow us on personal YouTube channels. Links always in the description below, right down there. That little little thing down right there. Yeah, they're not the missing links because they're there. Today, I made a funny. We are doing a movie review. Don't do buddy boo doo bum ba da ba Of our. Fifth. fifth? Is it fifth? Fifth. Malayalam film. Yep. Palindrome. Um, and uh, we, well, that was the word I was looking for before. Yes, it was. Yeah, yeah it was. Um, but the, uh, we, I remember watching the trailer for this one. Oh, vividly loving the trailer. Loved the trailer. And I had heard good reviews about it uh, coming out of um, the people that saw it. I, I believe I heard in India. It wasn't released anywhere except in Kerala. Hmm. Um, so it had a minimal release. Yeah. So I don't know. I can't remember if it was released here. I don't. I don't remember. No, I know it made it to the Toronto Film Festival. Yeah. But I would imagine if it was only released in South India, it didn't yeah. have broad international. Anyways, um, uh, but it's the uh, called Jalakatu, based or Jalakatu, based off of a short story of. Um, uh, some short story. I've never read the short story. Correct. But uh, director is, say his name? Lijo Jose Pelicetti. Who we've heard a lot about. Yes. <laughs> and had a strong yeah. recommendation uh, from Abhishek. Uh, Abhishek for, uh, not this film, but it was um, the Diaries one. Correct. I uh, said he's his favorite director, and I've often heard about this director as well. Yes, yes. Uh, let's see. And then actor-wise there's just a bunch of people in it uh there wasn't really a main actor anthony uh An antony yeah Ant anthony vargas uh, but and then, it was really an ensemble yeah anthony and uh, intentionally and yeah. uh uh, it's just Shimban Vinod. I guess they Jose. they were the most prominent, but there was really not even a prominent actor in this. No. Uh, but anyways, uh, 100% spoiler review came out in 2019. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. Come back. It's only 90 minutes. It's on Amazon, Amazon, right? Yeah. It's yeah. On, it's not going to take you very long. <laughs> it's probably the shortest Indian film we've ever watched. Probably. <laughs> and it's not just short in the runtime. It's short in the way it feels too. Yeah. It, it's a quick. Uh, anyway. Uh, initial thoughts, Rick. My initial thoughts. You got a paragraph? I got a paragraph. With an absurdist's wit, a visionary's eye, an iconoclast's courage, and a humanitarian's heart, Lijo Jose Pelissari has created an overtly subversive masterpiece, instantly categorizing him as the Jordan Peele of Indian film and a force to be reckoned with in the world of international cinematic artistry. Dang. That's quite a... It's quite a paragraph. I was... I was... <laughs> Tremendously impressed with this man. Yeah, the uh, same way I was when I saw Jordan Peele get out mm -hmm. his his initial directorial debut, and I was instantly aware. Oh my goodness, man! We've got somebody in cinema who's gonna say stuff. Yeah, this, <laughs> this is definitely a. I guess it would call it an experimental film. Mm -hmm. A a film with. Definitely a film with a message. Oh, uh, a big message. Mm -hmm. um, Overtly very, subversive. That, that's. I think that's the main character in this film. Yes. is the message. That's why there's no standout character. Yes. There isn't supposed to be. It's the message uh, is the character. The message. Yes. This film. Um, and that that was actually as I was watching it, I, you could tell right off the bat that okay, this is a different film, mm -hmm. and it's not going to be a normal style. And you can yeah. tell that he's going to have a message. Yes. But you're waiting to figure out what that message is. Mm -hmm. And so at, at first when I was watching it, I was like, one, one we'll talk about everything. Beautiful. <laughs> Just yeah. gorgeous. Yes, uh, beautifully and, and unique and all that. But I was like, I'm not relating to anybody here. Why? why I did I, that too why, at the why, outset, yeah. right? Why am I not relating to anybody? This doesn't make yep. any sense. Yep. Um, You're then, wanting to connect like you would with a yeah. character. And okay, where's my yeah. empathetic connection to the people? Yeah. It's not you, the point. There, there's none. None. You'd almost, you, you, I, outside of basically the buffalo or, or whatever <laughs> yeah. this is, yeah. you don't really feel that's... for anybody in this <laughs> film. And that's why it's, it, it's crazy that it's actually a really good film. Right. It's not like, it's not going to be anybody's favorite film. That's, that's, I don't think this film's trying to be anybody's favorite film. 
but I think everybody can appreciate how well made this film and, and the message obviously that that goes along with it because like it's not going to be like the lunchbox where you like go oh, off no. and you feel like oh i totally related with those characters no no i, no, I could no. watch it over and over again this is one that you're going to sit and you're going to ponder yes and you'll be like wow there was a lot he was trying to say and it was actually very very clever <laughs> Very, very clever, and he does hold, he he does with this film. He holds up um, both a mirror and a window. Mm -hmm. He I'll, I will repeatedly compare him over and over in the highest form of flattery to Jordan Peele. And, and the same that when when you watch Get Out and you watch Us, uh, you can appreciate it for its cinematic value, no matter where you live in the world. But when you understand what's going on in American culture and you understand the experience of black Americans and you understand the tensions between Republicans and Democrats, yeah. you, you recognize the brilliance of what he's communicating. Yeah. And for the limited understanding that we've begun to get over the past year and a half through Stupid ba Babies, through the films we've watched, through the people we've interviewed, and through relationships like the conversations I have with Andrani and some other Stupid Babies who talk to me about in-depth realities about culture and religious belief and political affiliation, mm -hmm. That is what I sense from this man, is yeah. that same Jordan Peele brilliance of, I am, and, and it, remember when we walked out of us, yeah. I looked at all of us and said, the people who need to see that film won't. Yeah. And even if they did, they probably won't get it. Mm -hmm. I feel the same way about this film. Yep. Right? Uh, and he, the, the director, say his name again. Uh, Lijo, I believe, the way it's spelled, sir, is Lijo Jose Pelicerri. And I believe he's only done like eight or nine films. So he's actually known as relatively new yeah. to the industry. Young director. Um, but <sighs> obviously a very, um, into, and obvious, and from what we've heard is best, and you can tell us even before we go further, the, what his next one should be. Should it, is it? Angamali Diaries. Diaries, the right. Ab uh, Abhishek Banerjee uh, recommended to us and a ton of other people have recommended to us. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, I want to talk about one of the most uh, striking things of it is the the cinematography. Yep. And then we could talk about the sound. Yep. As well. Absolutely. <laughs> um, but the cinematography, the way, one, this man knows how to do a long tracking shot. Mm-hmm. Like nobody's business. <laughs> <laughs> like, and also, I don't think people realize how complicated it is to shoot in the dark and make it look that beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, guys. Like, so, uh, um, center, hold on, I need. To it is extraordinarily thing. difficult to to film in the dark and make it make it first of all look believable, mm -hmm. so that you think you're seeing night. Because to make it look like night on film, you have to go to great lengths. You can't just put a camera out at night. But then to make it look artistically beautiful mm -hmm. and maintain your production like design, the shots when uh, even before we get to the end, uh, oh. the 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 shots where. You just see the hills and the trees and everybody's lanterns. Yes. They did that multiple times. Multiple times. And it was so freaking gorgeous. The way, obviously, yes. this is set in Kerala and it's beautiful. Right. Uh, and obviously, Kerala, as we know, is a, just a beautiful country. But they made this so much more pretty and beautiful that the cinematographer, say his name for me. Uh, the cinematographer he did a is a uh, job. Girish Gangadani. Mm -hmm. Right? Or, no, Gangaran. So forgive me if I'm mispronouncing your names. I, I uh, want to get that right. The cinematography <laughs> is so freaking gorgeous in this. Um, and then also the sound design of this entire film. One, it was unique. Yep. Like, it started off unique because it started off with um, the opening and closing of eyes, right? Mm -hmm. Open, close, open, close. And then it went into, like, bugs. Right, with the breathing in the clock. The breathing in the clock. Correct. Which I believe the clock was actually going in reverse. It may have been. And he brings it back later, but then it also goes from that to the cleaving yeah. of the, you know, the, the meat, meat cleaver. Meat. Yeah. Um, so yeah. There was a, like, right at the, off the bat, I was like, this director is just showing off. Yeah, this is one of those, <laughs> this is one of those, like, our last movie review where I was jumping up and down about sound. If you can, if you don't have... Surround sound. Do yourself a favor. I would have loved to watch this in theaters. Oh that would have man, been so much better. That would have been the best. But but at the very least, do yourself a favor and put on headphones, uh, or, or like I was able to have AirPods because you can capture 
the, the nuances of the sound. And the, I mean, there were times where it was clearly dubbed sound and it was so spectacularly done. It was just, in my mind, pure Foley work, just mm -hmm. gorgeous, wonderful Foley work where even, even sound itself became a character in the film. Oh yeah. Right? Yeah. Ex like, <laughs> we'll get them. but at the end, obviously this, the entire last 15 minutes is just insane. Yeah, insanity. And I, were you laughing? Yeah. I was laughing and, so hard. And wonderful. And we'll oh. get into the deeper meanings of it all. Yeah. We'll, talk we'll conclude that. with that. Um, but that sh the last one when they're all piling on top of each other and, and it just, and it they're just, all still <laughs> yeah, it's just, and, but the sound he chose is basically just slabs of meat, slabs of meat, slapping each other. Like, Jump. <laughs> yep. yep. And it was very reminiscent of that hard to watch scene in Game of Thrones when, if you haven't seen, just skip ahead like yeah, skip ahead of the spoilers for Game of Thrones. Um, you gotta go 30 seconds ahead. Uh, when he's under all the people in the battle. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what it reminded me of, but he's trying to get to the top. I yeah. had the exact same feeling yes. in it, uh, during that part. Well, you would. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I know you awful. would. Yeah. <laughs> it's an awful, awful feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, to, uh, the claustrophobic. Uh, yeah, to even think about being in a setting like that. But, uh, yeah, so everything in this, in this entire thing... Um, the only thing that wasn't spectacular, and it, I don't think it was supposed to be, was, like, the acting. It was just... It was fine. It was like... but. This is not an actor-driven film. This is the director is Correct. the and the sound design and the cinematography are the stars. They're the stars of and this film. All you need is people to be believable. They're not even really given anything that they need to go with. You don't need to empathize with a particular character. Yeah, this is There's not, not really character driven. a lot of storylines. There's one that the the main reason is this guy's trying to buy uh, get a bowl of meat for the right uh, the wedding. But then but that's, that's really all that is. That's just because you have to have a subject. Yeah, and then and then there's one thing at the end where the two guys are fighting, mm -hmm. and then that's it's over pretty quick. But it's a great sequence, mm -hmm. uh, a great fight sequence. Yeah, like in the entire, like the way he did the cinematography and the tracking, and like this director knows how to shoot. Well, and the <laughs> character element of it is, I don't even remember a single character's name, and you don't need to. You're no. not supposed to. No. Because it's a metaphor. It's mm -hmm. it's not supposed to really give you a sense of its permanence in time space continuum because what it's giving to you in, in fact it's actually I don't think it's in the reality. It's not intended to be that way. It's 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 definitively allegorical and metaphorical and that is it. And it's wanting to show you something about multiple facets of the human experience uh -huh. and what is wrong with it. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. What is wrong? I mean, I, I kept writing these things down of things as simple as just herd mentality. Yeah. But that's deep when you talk about some things, particularly with issues regionally within India. Yeah. And how many people jump on herd mentality or the, the proverbial bandwagon. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, which one here is the animal? Mm hmm. That's another message it gets across to you. Uh, which one is truly the wild beast on the rampage here? Sounds of nature are constantly being overrun by the sounds of men. Mm -hmm. He will consistently give you the tranquility and the natural order and violate it mm -hmm. with something of the grunting or the chopping or the machinations yeah. of, of men who are so blinded. That's one of the absurdest hysterical things is... All of this is to stop a bull. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the, I think the really, really, is, is basically the message is even something as wild as a bull is not as wild and beast-like as primal men and how, how primal they are. Correct. Uh, and so basically in the beginning, I, I'm pretty sure uh, after I said it, after I looked it up, the clock... That mm. kept coming mm -hmm. was actually moving back. Was ticking backwards. Was ticking backwards mm. and showing that men were going back in time Reg and, and were regressing. Back, we're regressing as, yeah. as men, and it, yeah. it was actually, I think, on purpose uh, that it was mostly all men that were oh, 100%. That, that were doing the the basic um, beast like caveman like. Oh yeah, uh, I mean, it obviously it kept getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse, and basically it's just we're all just. 
uh, hunters, but they, they they told themselves lies. Like at the end, this is, this is one of the gorgeous things about the, and there's so many gorgeous things about the end, but the gorgeous things was they kept telling themselves that they're trying to catch a bull to, you know, protect each other, right. to, to save their crops, to do, to whatever. But in the end, when the one person finally caught it, <laughs> then that didn't matter. <laughs> it was, it, it it was never about that. It was never the him. Right. And then they were mad at that guy who caught it. Right. And they wanted, they wanted to yes. be the guy. And so then they just kept piling on was, because now they wanted to be the person on top. They Ego. Want, so literally, it was, it was who's going to end up on top. It was greed and it was um, a selfishness. Yes, and all the, I love you miss it if you're if you're so panged with love of animal that you don't want to witness the the abuse of an animal. Uh, you you have to it's hard to watch, but you have to get past it in order to see the message because the moment where that's happening and he zooms in on the bull's face. Mm -hmm. There's that immediacy of the tragicness, which there is a tragicness to it, but it's also almost like the bull's looking at you going, really? This was all over a bull? I don't think so, guys. Are you, you getting the, me this isn't about me, everybody. These, this is not about me. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about, it's got messages that are powerful about toxic masculinity. Yeah. Um, it's got messages about the herd mentality, as we already mentioned, in terms of where you affiliate yourself without thinking politically, religiously, socially, uh, dietarily, in every single way, forcing you to reconsider the things that you do based on, uh, uh, am I just conforming? Is it just societal normalcy? Yeah. Uh, and and the, the, I, I, one of my favorite moments burn the Jeep <laughs> because that is exactly what happens. You watch things devolve. Mm -hmm. We're watching it here in America mm -hmm. where everything devolves. And the very thing that was central is not central by any stretch of the imagination. You've mm -hmm. gone from a bull is loose and we should catch it because it's dangerous to burn the Jeep. <laughs> uh, just brilliant. Yeah. Just brilliant. And, and, and there was actually another part that I really thought was so interesting. And the, the more you think about it after you get to the end, it was actually quite smart. That one point where the man, he came back in to get his rope, but then he was sexually assaulting this woman. Yes. Do you yes. That? Yes. And it was like, oh, what is going on? Yes. It's hard to watch. But then he says, I'm going to catch a bull. I caught him. And then she changes her tune. And she's like, Oh, give me a piece and she looked all lovey-dovey and it's like wait are they in a relationship did she right. want that to happen and right. so it was basically going to that caveman thing yes even them she was looking out for number one oh he's he's now the alpha male right i need to be with him to basically right. to get what i need to get what i need exactly and so like he, he even tied in the women uh in in, in basically the primal Yes, and, and did for me the summation at the end, which there's so much he's doing symbolically, like you already mentioned, the who's going to be on top yeah. and the male ego. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I saw, which was juxtaposed to that, that sequence, because we consistently went back to the old man dying. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And his breathing and time. And what I got, I don't know if this is what he intended. It's one of the beautiful things about cinema is that you can get a message for you in the moment. That's, yeah. I believe providential and serendipitous, but maybe not intended. Mm. I wonder about his intentionality with the message of th these three things I saw at the end. First was while that is piling up, the man grabs that rope and he pulls himself up and he sees outside his window, the bull. The bull in its natural habitat, and he has this encounter with it, which is very much the adage and the truth of so many men, humans, but men in particular, go to their deathbed, and it's only then where they get the right perspective about existence. And they look at things the way they were intended to be from the beginning and the way they're supposed to be, and they look back upon a life for all of this ego and all of this conquest and all of this destruction. And at the end of life, like at the end of the day, they look back on it and recognize 
what was I doing? <coughs> Excuse me. The absurdity of what I was contributing to that was completely outside of what the created order was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And they literally not only create this ego pile, but it's a it's a, a literal tower tower of Babel mm -hmm. because they don't stop yelling like cavemen even when they're making the, the, the pile right and it's just this jump and they're all still coming yeah. because everybody wants to get on the pile and then during the credits did you watch that animation during the end credits because at the end credits there's this animation that takes you right back to caveman days mm -hmm. and what he's pointing out to is we are no better than we were then with these, where, where is the evolution of mind? Where's the evolution of society? Where's the evolution of our common shared humanity and recognizing the order of things and what we prioritize? And it was just freaking yeah. that, brilliantly that, hysterical. That end sequence was, and just obviously gorgeous. it took you out. It, it, it showed you that basically this is not our reality that this is in. Obviously, people no, no, just no. pile on top of each other. And, and yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the sequence was so beautiful and gorgeous. And then it was just so, when he was trying to get out, mm -hmm. and like I think it was, that part was in the trailer, a, a little bit of it, uh, when he was trying to get out, people were just clawing at him. Yes. Oh, great yes. sequence. Yes. Uh, probably the only thing that I really, really disliked, and I'm not even sure if I disliked it, I kind of go back and forth sometimes, was the end when he spoon fed you that this was basically cavemen. Uh, oh, you didn't like that? I don't like being spoon fed. <laughs> I didn't I feel it was a spoon here, feeding. Here, I get it because some people do need to be kind of spoon fed. Yeah. But I don't like that. I, I, I prefer people to come to that conclusion on their own. Yeah, it didn't bother me. Yeah. I, I agree with you. Yeah. I agree with you, but I think I, that may I, have been, I would think it would have been a stronger end the way, like, with the pile and him trying to get out. I think that would have been a much more powerful end than, than cutting to... I, it was a beautiful sequence the way they did it, and it was nothing like that. It's just I don't like when they basically nail it down, like, I, this I didn't, a message. The reason that I didn't feel it was a spoon feed uh, is because I felt like it was more of a slap in the face. Mm. I felt it was him at the end going, okay, so for all of you... Who, who don't have the intelligence quotient or the emotional quotient to understand what I just said, here it is. Yeah. Get it now? That's what I mean, spoon feed is. I'm yeah, saying, no. Oh, yeah. I didn't feel it was a spoon feed to tell you versus it was, uh, if I can get one person at this moment to have their aha, I just prefer... <laughs> To have people find that on their own as opposed to... <laughs> oh, I would do. That's like one of the only gripes that I have. Yeah, it, I in love In terms it. of artistic-wise. I, I loved it too. Yeah. Uh, obviously, oh, and it doesn't ruin them. One right. other thing, because I'm sure some of you will comment about this. We know, and you said it at the very beginning, we know that the title of this is derived from, and the buffalo running, is derived from an actual celebration thing. I think it that, canceled that, it in 2017. They stopped it? But it's in Tamanadu. It's not in Kerala. Okay, yeah. Uh, and he took this as the emblem through which he was going to convey this because that celebration, like other celebrations that are happening in different cultures around the world, everything from the running of the bulls to bull it. fighting, I it. Um, they, they have, irrespective of what you may believe culturally about the historicity of those things and their value inherent in the culture, at their core, what they do bring to the forefront of the mind of the person watching it who's unfamiliar with it isn't cultural, it's ego. Mm -hmm. It's masculinity at its most yeah. toxic level and not stewardship of creation, domination of creation. Yeah. And I, I love that he took this yeah. and made this the template through which he was gonna tell you, here's I, what's wrong. I believe it was canceled. I'm hoping it, it wasn't ever brought back. That, yeah, that, that whole festival. I I hate anything to do with that style. Like the running with the bulls. I don't. I don't. I think it's dumb. I was. I don't understand why men are so obsessed with bulls. And no, you do understand. Stuff. You just don't agree. Yeah, I do. yeah. I'm with well, you. I, we understand I, it. We yeah. just don't agree with it. I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's, it's like so dumb. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I, I do like that he took the name of it. It was kind of another thing to tie into it, but because it's a good name for it, um, because that's essentially what it was yeah um but yeah it was really 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 good uh i'm hoping oh and i'm hoping if you haven't seen it yet you're still not around but um what of lijo yeah either lijo or lijo i don't know if the, the proper pronunciation 
which of his films, because I know he has a, a big reputation of doing a lot of really good work, what of his films should we watch yeah. next? Is Very the, excited the about di him. The diary one, the whatever. I would love to talk to him. He seems like a really intelligent director. Oh. Um, so let us know down below. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.